where we draw this lovely Venice scene. And uh, we'll talk about how to simplify, some different composition ideas, and anything else that you are curious about. Um, so um, when, when you get here, when you can hear me, please chat a little high so I know this is all working. And um, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to tell you a teeny bit about myself and a little bit about this, where the photo came from. So my name is Jessie Rashi. I'm a professional artist and I work out of my studio in South Dakota. And um, I have two focus areas. One is portraits of children and the other is landscapes. Um, and those have lots of animals in them. And um, and so if you want to find out more about me, I have a link in the description below. And so this photo is actually from Pixabay, which um, they have a bunch of photos that are free to use um, without, um, you don't even need to credit them, but I think it's lovely and I did put the credits in the description. And so that's where this came from. Um, and so I looked, I looked through all the photos getting ready for this and I started off with one thing in mind, but I started seeing um, a couple photos with boats in them and kind of went down that rabbit hole and ended up looking for gondolas in Venice. And um, so many of the scenes are from aerial perspectives um, where it just seemed very, very complicated and more about the architecture and um, then um, it just seemed very, very complicated <laughs> for what we're doing. And then I found this one and I thought it was very sweet and um, I thought this would be a great way to talk about how to simplify, how to choose what to put in and what to leave out. So let me know what you think about this choice. And good morning, Cars. It's so nice to, to see you again. And Saya, I'm so glad you're here. And Liz, yay. Ah, why? <laughs> so, oh, okay. <laughs> so you can tell I have my studio helper today to. Uh, oh, Liz is here. Yeah, isn't that awesome? And so, yeah, welcome. And so hopefully I won't have as many technical errors as I did on, on Tuesday. That was that was really rough um, where uh, I, I kept the video kept restarting, <laughs> so hopefully that won't happen, but here we go. Uh, I guess when you're live, uh, wild things like that can happen. So here I am, I've got typing paper and um, just a regular old yellow number two pencil. And um, so I thought we could start with just sketching out some ideas and you do not have to sketch what, what I sketch, but you can. And um, so I'm just gonna sketch out a couple compositional ideas. And um, if you remember, we did talk about some of the more, more common compositions and some ideas behind um, compositional choices uh, a little while ago. And so here we've got this uh, kind of an entrance into the scene with buildings on both sides. And so um, I'm just going to start by putting that in and see where it goes. And then we can try another composition without it and see how that is. And so um, I'm just putting in big shapes. I'm not trying to be exacting with... Um, it even looking like anything at all. Um, but I do kind of want this movement. The boat is leaning very slightly. So here. Let's see. Well, let's see. This angle is leaning very slightly. I'm not, I'm not sure if the boat is actually leaning. Let's see. So we've got that, and then we've got this figure 
it leans kind of like this and so I'm exaggerating a little bit just to see what I think of this composition. And he's got his oar going across and this shadow, so beautiful. Okay, so we could just leave it at that. I don't think this part is helping with this <laughs> scene at all. Um, and let's see, we could put the building in also that's behind. So this is a little bit of the golden ratio uh, composition here where this focal area is in kind of the golden spot. If you, if you cut your horizontal and vertical page into thirds, uh, the main element here is about a third of the way up and a third of the way in. There, we've got this kind of golden ratio. Um, oh, so Liz asked if I'm going to add color. Um, so I'm not going to add color today, although I think this scene would lend itself so well to um, maybe like a watercolor painting with ink on top. <laughs> That'd be gorgeous. But I've been keeping these Thursdays for um, just pencil drawing. Um, because there are some people who've been joining that um, the pencil is the art supply they have. And I wanted this to be like very accessible to, um, to people who don't necessarily have art supplies in their house. Um, but I have been thinking about maybe on a different day coming back and you know using what, what we do today as a base for doing something with some color. So if that sounds fun, let me know. And, um, and uh, we can do that. So uh, this is the golden ratio kind of a, or maybe rule of thirds, we'll say. <laughs> and then there's also that balancing um, uh, the balance beam one if if you remember this one where you have one element that's balancing another element and I think that would actually work really nicely with this also yeah awesome yeah thanks for asking I, I love it your questions are always very much appreciated so let's see, this does have a nice little lean. So with the balancing design or composition, we've got the boat and the person. And I'm thinking of this as kind of a solid form. Um, you don't have to think of it as a solid form. It's just, you know, you kind of, you have to kind of make some choices here, right? So, We've got this, and then I think the building would be kind of a nice counterpoint to the other part of this balance. And, and so I think something in this area balancing against the gondola would be nice for a balance beam type, um, or the some people call this the scales. And so maybe we could just do that window right there and have everything else implied. And uh, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And um, there's this gorgeous brick wall and then these flowers in the window. Lots of pipes and flowers. And then we could just kind of imply that there's other stuff but not really get into it and have this nice balance. I, I like this idea quite a bit. Let's see. And so this one, it got so messy, but so with this one, oh, here, let's 
get the shadow in. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And so with this one, we have this person as the real focal area, and then everything else can be kind of subtle. It's there, but it's not as strong as our main focus area. And so there's a little bit of this kind of stuff in the background. And you can see that with these different concepts, it's not like a hard and fast rule. It's just an idea to help you make some choices. I think I kind of like that one. But you are welcome to... Um, let me know if you if you feel like I should go with one of these ideas more than the other. Um, let me know, and uh, otherwise I'll kind of uh, I'll just pick one. I'm gonna do one last one that's more of a tunnel, and so I'll emphasize these walls more. Let's see. And um, and then it's this pretty little scene that you're just kind of seeing through the, the walls here. You make them a little bit smaller. A little bigger here and put some of this stuff in. I'm just implying that there's lots of stuff. And then there'd be a little bit more emphasis on the actual walls. It's a little bit of the details maybe, or just a little bit stronger line to show that we actually care about these walls a little bit. And um, I'm forgetting right now what the official name of this composition is, but um, I've seen it used in landscapes a lot where you have a couple trees and you're kind of looking through them to the scene beyond. And um, I'm still kind of drawn to this one the most. What do you guys think? Let's see. And you're always welcome to let me know like if I put things where you can't see them. <laughs> let me know. Like, hey, move that. <laughs> I appreciate that. And there we go. And so Oh, that's up a little high for you. Okay. I'm just going to set this back here. And so you've probably noticed that I really enjoy trying out different kinds of paper. And, um, and so I have um, cardstock paper here. It's smooth, so I, th I think it'll be a fun, interesting paper to work on. Um, so I'm using cardstock with just a number two pencil. And so I think uh, if nobody else has an issue with this, I'm just going to go for this design. It's kind of the rule of thirds or the golden ratio. And it's just the idea of putting something in one of these um, spots as the focal area. I'm going to move it down a little bit. And, um, you know, different people talk about this rule differently. 
and um, it's it's like anything in art it's not a hard and fast rule it's more of an idea to just um, you know, sometimes it's nice to have an idea of where to start and um, where to go. So there's this nice, subtle leaning where this side of the boat is just slightly higher than that side of the boat. And I think that's very lovely. So I'm just kind of mapping in and using lighter pencil marks so that I can erase later. And um, depending on how thick your paper is, um, it might be harder or easier to erase without ripping it. Um, and um, using a lighter pencil mark um, to begin with will help with, with that kind of thing. And I don't mind all the extra marks. I kind of like that. Just trying to keep this tilt here. I'll let that down a little bit. Um, I enjoy messy drawings, but it, you know, if that's not your thing, um, you uh, you know, draw in the way that you really enjoy. Oh yeah, close up to see the um the sketches thanks for asking Liz so oh, I see that. Oh. oh now I do this is for the <laughs> sure what? okay um yes let's do the art okay. <laughs> yeah so this is kind of the rule of thirds or the golden ratio um but also I have read uh, a book about this uh rule and um kind of melting all the rules down into just a rule of um, try to stay out of certain areas as your focal area. So I said, you know, you've got your piece of paper or your composition and this area um, for a scene with like this, you might want to stay out of that area as your main focal point and also um, the outside edge is your main focal point. Um, and, um, and then also maybe the middle section. So if you stay out of those areas, then you end up with these four spots as kind of a good place for a focal point. But with that said, uh, some of the most beautiful paintings in the world are um, you know, have something like the focal area right there. And that's very traditional for beautiful portraits. And, um, and I think it can make wonderful, strong paintings and drawings. So these rules are just starting places and, um, and they're meant to be broken. <laughs> and then this one is more of a balance beam where you're balancing one focal area against um, like a secondary area. So that's that's these guys. Oops. Let me get it in the camera. And <clears throat> there. I'm just kind of leaving this out to remember what the idea is. There we go. And there, let's scoot this up a little bit. There. Yeah. Okay, scooting this in so maybe you can see a little better. So, thanks for asking about that. And so, there. Straighten it out a teeny bit for myself. So, here I'm just trying to get the general shape so that, um, yes, yeah, so I know I'm happy with the composition. And I'm just using a plain old school eraser, and then I have this other one that's white, but it's the same. It's the same uh, 
that kind of rubbery eraser. And I use this to wipe off the paper so I don't end up smudging pencil all over. Um, let's see. And I'm just going to get the general shape of the guy. He's leaning a little bit and then leaning back a little bit. And he's not much taller than the front of the gondola. Let's see. Looks like it ends kind of behind his armpit there. And uh, I'm not worried about getting it exactly like the photograph. I just kind of want to get a nice feeling for it. Um, and... So as far as things that we can leave out, we can absolutely leave out his stripedy shirt. Um, I'm gonna leave out the walls. Let's see. And I'm just getting a general gesture on him. So, um, so I'm just gonna leave out pretty much all of the details on the person. Let's see, I'm doing kind of this boxy figure uh, using cubes and um, and it can all be kind of um, corrected and moved around until you feel good with it you know and um, that is one of the really fun things about pencil is you can just you can keep moving stuff until your paper wears out. <laughs> and so here we go. And let's make it in some of the darkest areas here. Oh, plug in. I hope not. Okay, so here we go. And then that shadow is so beautiful, and it's such a, I don't know, shadows on water where you can kind of see through into the watercolor. It's uh, so nice. So I'm just kind of mapping that in a little bit. And this guy doesn't make much sense here without his oar. So <clears throat> if you haven't seen me do this before, I hold my pencil up kind of against the, um, the photograph or if I'm drawing from life, just um, I kind of hold it up to find that same angle and then just move it right over to my paper. And, um, you know, sometimes if you really want to uh, make sure you're being accurate, you can hold your pencil up to the angle, move it over to your paper and hold it down and um, just whoop, set my thumbs there and just draw right along the edge of your pencil. And let's see. So, hi, Pat. Welcome. What? I can't see that. Um, I don't know. Are you? Facebook? What's that? Is that Facebook? Uh, no, I'm just on YouTube today. Oh. <laughs> or to, oh, yeah, I can see it now. Yeah. Cool. Or to do spark, so that's what I was looking for. And. Okay, so I've got this guy. He's got um, I have a triangle-shaped torso here. 
you know, a little broader on the shoulders and um, and the same thing with the legs, a little broader up above and then they come together and it kind of accentuates that curving in and um, and right now I'm gonna oh, and this foot actually comes back a little bit that's fun so I'm gonna leave that about there and put some of this background in and So, and for people who are joining um, after I start, you are always welcome to ask questions, even if you're worried that it might be something I've already talked about. Um, don't worry about that at all. Um, and So I'm just going to get a little bit of this um, windows and so you can see I'm using the side of my paper um, just running my finger down it don't do this if you have thin paper you'll get paper cuts but this is um, really thick watercolor paper in the background so um, and then my the windows Let's see. They're slightly irregular, but they still follow the same um, angles. They're all on a flat surface. And so I'm just going to use this other pencil to map in and the tops and bottoms. And They're horizontal right about here. That's kind of our eye level. Um, and there we go. Let's see. And then the bottom windows are all different heights. So I'm just going to put in a couple lines. So this, I accentuated this line a little bit more than I like. But, and then somewhere halfway in between with these windows. And again, this is all completely erasable. I'm just, uh, I'm going to start with some perspective lines that uh, it kind of makes sense that I can follow and and one of the really neat things about this particular city is just the kind of irregularity of the walls and um uh, so I think if, if a person really wanted to, they could spend hours and hours drawing a scene like this and getting into all of the specifics. Um, but um, for this quick lesson, I am just going to try to get down the idea of it and Kind of work through making some choices here and okay so i got some of that and i'm just going to pick out some um some windows here I figure out where I want those on my grid 
So I really like that window that's kind of a counterbalance to him right in this area. And just the little flowers right in front of it. And let's see the the wall comes this way and then it it goes in and then it's dark back in this area. So in there. And What else we've got? This really interesting piece of architecture. And you can see I'm just kind of picking out some shapes. I'm not trying to be all that exacting. Just kind of getting to that idea of um, just all this interest back here. Oh, that's wacky. What what fun architecture. There's this, uh, <laughs> this beautiful little arch right down there. And with the lighting, there's not a really clear shadow on this side or on that side. So I'm just going to use some hash marks to darken this a little bit and put a little bit of a shadow right below. And so, you know, as far as like simplifying, I think, you know, for this sort of thing, we can leave out as much of the information as we want and you could just focus on the boat. You could leave the person off. Um, you could focus on this area and just kind of leave the person as a shadow or, you know, leave the gondola out. A lot of options for simplifying and, um, and for me, the, the main choices I'm making with simplifying are that I'm, I'm just going to leave him as a gesture. And um, and I'm just gonna pick out a couple values like um, the brick value, which is this kind of medium darkness that I'm just doing with some hash marks, and then the darker value that's like in the windows and down in the gondola and underneath this arch. And so it'll really just be a three value drawing. And um, so up here, I'm just going to make this a dark window again with some little shutters. And And let's see. And this is kind of one of the things I find really beautiful about this place is that, you know, this window has this ledge that comes out below, and then that window is a lot different. So I'm going to try to get that, get the difference in there. Let's see. And so 
I'm going to get one more little detail over here so it's not um, so much focused. Oh, there's the beautiful clothes hanging up in this area. I think a person could really draw this for a very long time. And um, if anybody's interested in um, the link to this photograph, just let me know and I'll, um, I'll get that. Well, let's see. And there's this window that's kind of peeking out behind the edge of this uh, brickwork that stands out. And it has flowers too, which is really fun. And you can see I'm just doing squiggle line flowers. And um, And as I said, you are welcome to follow along what I'm doing or to just do something totally different that sings to your heart more. And, oh, absolutely. So, um, oh, yes? Huh, that's weird. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, but uh, so Kara's asked, uh, she said she'd like the photo link and so... Um, I will find that as soon as I'm done with the live stream and I'll put it, um, in the description below. And so we've got some flowers here and some flowers there and you can see I'm really simplifying these guys just by putting kind of little blobs and kind of more um, organic um, marks. <laughs> There's this wonderful uh, greenery up on the wall. It's so fun. Um, so let's see. I'm just picking out a couple areas to darken in. And then this guy, since I'm doing more of a focal area, Excellent. So I'm going to add more details and really kind of focus in on this focal area. And so with the composition idea, um, like I said, it's just sort of ideas to either follow or not follow, but I think it, it can give other ways to think about um, you know, how to lay out a drawing and um, and I think, you know, as long as it's, um, that it helps give you more ideas instead of making you feel like there are certain things you can't do, then I, I think these are really useful ideas. But um, every, every compositional like rule <laughs> that there is has been broken in wonderful ways and um, and so I think it's kind of a mis misnamed when people you know when I call them a rule it's more of a an idea or a starting point but, so here so my plan here is just to get some um, really strong values, stronger values than I have back here, and some fun details. So like a little bit more clear than what's back there. And um, here we go. So there's all this uh, light from the water reflecting back up into the gondola and um, you know if you're like a super realist and you want to draw all that stuff awesome but for the rest of us I think 
breaking it down and squinting your eyes a lot will help. Um, you know, just squint down until you see like two values, like a, a darkest dark and a medium and plus the white and or even just a dark and light. And then and then once you've squinted down and you have found your darkest dark, your dark areas and your light areas, you know, just move those onto your paper. And um, and that's a really good way to um, to simplify things. These gondolas have these fun little arms that hold the oars up, and uh, put that in there. Uh. <laughs> So, um, oh, do you see one? No. Oh, okay. So, Cars says the architectural rules certainly seem like they were bent when some of these fun windows were placed, and that's absolutely true, and I think this is another situation where breaking the rules can end up with wonderful results, <laughs> and uh, it's just so fun. Okay, so getting sucked into the, the beautiful uh, architecture here. But so I'm gonna try focusing on this guy a little bit more. And um, you know, I think that drawing is an exploration. So if you get halfway through and you decide the thing you really care about and want to be drawing is. Um, something different than you had planned. Uh, I see no reason not to switch emphasis. <laughs> and so, there we go. So I'm having these angled hash marks on all of the things that I'm drawing. So the little eraser marks are, uh, make it more difficult to draw so there. But I was thinking for the water, it might be fun to do either horizontal or vertical. Oh, you do see it now? Okay, then I will let you read the next ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the last one. Yeah. Cool. And so, here we go. There's inside here, I'm going to try to keep the lines going the same way that at the, you know, so they're all kind of at the same angle. And um, and I know it's more complicated when you look at it, but I'm just trying to simplify it down to a couple of lines um, just to make it, uh, you know, more reasonable to draw. And so again, I'm just squinting my eyes until I see, you know, is this area back here darker or lighter than this area? And, you know, it's pretty close, so I'm just making a choice that I'm going to make it a little darker. And with this or So the or is the bottom of the or is somewhere in this area around where the bottom of the boat is, but um, you can see a little bit of it under the water. So um, this is another thing that some people could really draw this, like how how the or looks under the water and. Uh, really go a long ways with that uh, for for this I'm personally just going to squint a whole bunch and kind of darken this area a little bit and leave it at that and 
and you can see I've, I've left a lot of stray lines and um, you know that's just a style thing so if you like erasing those extra lines awesome if you like leaving them awesome <laughs> it all that's part of what makes all of our drawings different and interesting and so I'm erasing in here a little bit to kind of find the form a little bit more my little stick figure and and let's see I'm gonna erase the extra lines out here all these grid lines This to me is a little bit like what we did with tape, taking off the tape a couple weeks ago, where um, you know you tape the edges and then draw right up to them, and then at the very end you take the tape off and reveal what your drawing really looks like. And um, so, for erasing the grid lines, you get to kind of finally see what this building <laughs> looks like that we've drawn right and so the grid lines under these hash marks i'm going to erase diagonally just like the hash marks and um if it uh if i'm not happy with it i can just draw right over or erase again but sometimes that can make really nice really nice texture and or interesting marks you know and there we go and And let's see, I'm just going to darken in right here. There's this very subtly darker shadow under the shadow side of the boat. So I'm going to take these lines all the way down like a continuation of the same form I'm just gonna see how that goes Boy, the color <laughs> is really wonderful. Oh, is that the whole thing? You know, I've been having some internet issues. Also. And so, let's see, let me get a little bit more details on the figure and let me know how your drawings are going. Um, and if there's any different areas that you want to focus on or see how someone else would focus on them, just let me know. So I'm just adding a little bit of detail to the figure. You just see his back here, obviously. So, um, just 
trying to capture where his the edge of his body kind of goes out and then and then down. Oops. Trying to make this so it's not completely rigid, and then he has his foot up a little bit. really see the feet so much but there's this kind of nice little gesture and that looks just a little darker than the other one and let's see and then and then there's a real shadow um, right in front of the board he's standing on. And and again, these are just details that I am finding to um, to kind of emphasize that the boat is my main interest, the boat and the figure. But um, but any details that you find interesting will bring the boat forward. And And just by getting the angle of the shoulder. So this is, you know, it's just kind of a stick figure with the angle of his spine, the curve of his spine, and the angle of his shoulder, and the angle of his arm. And then I'm just kind of taking my stick figure and giving it a little bit more form. If it was a larger drawing, I'd uh, I'd get his ears in there. And the shadow a little bit. And, you know, if you're drawing something like this and you feel like it would make a lot more sense if you could see his hand from the other arm or something like that. Um, you know, there's nothing stopping you from adding in more information that, you know, or making things up to add in. But... There we go. And then there's some people sitting right up here and I'm just going to kind of draw some messy stuff up here, some circles and and some hash marks to kind of imply that something interesting is going on, but um, there just like a little circle kind of implies that there's a guy there. and. Uh, Give him a little friend. She's kind of leaning way up over here, but it's her foot over there. And and so yeah. So let me know how yours is going. And um, as always, you are very welcome to. Um, uh, either message me on Instagram, um, and my, my Instagram name is the same as my YouTube name, um, and show me what you've been working on in these 
drawing lessons or um, or if you like posting if you're a person that does post your um, pictures uh, you're welcome to tag me and I'll come and give you a like So let's see, I'm going to add some of the shadows down here. And there's kind of a little shadow in the water. I'm just adding that very lightly. So I don't really want anything else to be as dark as this person, just because I'm kind of all in on this. Um, you know, focal point concept, but um, but uh, you know, like I said, that's just because it, it's interesting and fun for me. But if you want all of your areas to have uh, equally dark darks, um, that is also a completely uh, awesome layout choice, composition choice. So let's see, this shadow is darkest right up here. So I'm gonna add in a little bit more. So for those of you that have been um, joining me live for this whole several months now um that's awesome and thank you and we've had um you know we started off with some real basic um drawing circles and different um uh like real basic shapes and how to hold a pencil with the artist's hold and um since then we've done so many different things with drawing birds and cows and people and um, and talking about composition and talking about um, just so many different things it's it's been a really interesting journal journey and um, the um, sketchbook I got for this is um, Recorded is the way full, which <laughs> I think is super neat. Uh, and I hope you are getting a nice full sketchbook too. Okay, so let's see. Oh, this is fun. They've got potted flowers up here. And over here, too. <laughs> and you can see we're just doing kind of a circle-y, um, blobby flowers. But um, for me, that's enough information. And, uh, you know, these sketchbooks, they're for you, so however you like drawing in them or getting the information down, that's perfect. And what a lot of flowers. Wow, wow, wow. Most of these windows have flowers in them. That's so fun. It's, uh, it's making me feel like I should put some flowers in my windows. <laughs> so you can see I'm, I'm getting a lot of these windows in here, but I'm just simplifying some of them down to just the bare minimum of kind of a rectangle and shaded in. And we got here. Um, these windows are all in different spots, which is really cool. 
And so I'm going to get them in, but I, I don't feel like I need to put them in exactly the same place. I'm just getting that kind of idea of them being kind of different shapes, different sizes, and different heights. I think that's pretty neat. So get some of the flowers here and just kind of darken in the window a little bit. So And as I've mentioned with the um with the just plain old number two pencil, uh it's also an HB, so it's um it's a medium pencil, it's not hard or soft. Um uh some of them are much better than others, and if you're going along and you feel like your pencil um puts down lines erratically, like it's not doing what you want or it puts down part of a line and then you feel like it's um, like it's uh, got something hard in there that's not making a line, um, then that's just a pencil with a bunch of impurities in it. It's not your fault, it's, <laughs> it's not you, it's the pencil. And um, so when you get a pencil that puts down really nice lines, hang on to that for drawing. And if you get a pencil that's really frustrating when you try to draw, um, just set it aside and don't use it for drawing. So, because that can be really frustrating. So here we go. It's the rest of the reveal. And okay, getting rid of my um, my perspective lines. And so I'm thinking for one of the lessons coming up soon, I'll do, um, you know, talk more about perspective. Um, and I could either do a lesson where I do, um, you know, where we all draw using a certain perspective, or I could do an overview of the different ways that people describe perspective in artwork. Um, so you are welcome to let me know which one of those things sounds best or if you like the idea of um, maybe doing an overview and then getting more in depth about um, you know certain types of perspective. Um, so. I have a darker pencil here. Um, there it is. So I have these art pencils, um, and um, B is soft, so it puts down darker lines, um, darker marks, and H is hard. And um, I'm just going to come up into, you can see already how much darker it is. So I'm coming up into this area to really bring this towards us. Yes. Um, remember <laughs> when you're looking at a landscape or anything where um, there's a lot of distance, um, if everything is kind of the same, if, if you have similar colors and values um, the things that are closest to you will have the lightest lights and the darkest darks um, and so you can show distance in your drawings by having really light lights and dark darks next to each other in the in the areas that are close and then more grays in the background and so I'm just going to put a few touches here and there and there. the old 
old fashioned do pencil sharpening. And if you feel like your pencil, especially when you're using a really soft pencil, if you feel like you're trying to put a mark down and it doesn't go where you want it, that's because it needs to be sharpened. Um, and um, I've seen some artists that just sharpen their pencils every, you know, they'll put down a few marks and then they'll sharpen again. And, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with sharpening as much as you need to. So I'm just kind of going back in and emphasizing the parts of the lines that I like and kind of ignoring the parts that I don't like. And so, you know, every time I put a mark down, I think of it as an opportunity to kind of move things that I'm not happy with. And, um, so here we go. Trying to imply a little bit of, um, you know, that gesture, that kind of leaning quality. And and then right there, we'll add some shadow. And let's see. So uh, let me know how your drawing went today. I'd love it if you if you chat and let me know if you were drawing or um, if you if you got any new fun ideas for future drawings. Um, and you are welcome to vote on um, on what we do next time. Uh, your requests and suggestions are always welcome. Um, so, um, let's see. I'm going to add just a little bit of value back here to part of this. Let's see. Um, just while I wait to see if you have any last comments. And thanks for joining me. If you want to get notified of um, future painting demos and drawing lessons, um, you can subscribe and click the bell or you can sign up for my um, newsletter. And I usually let people know um, what's happening in the upcoming week for um, YouTube live stuff. There we go. And... So here we go. I'll just pull this up here. So this is what I ended up doing today. And um, like I said, if you want to share what you did, you I would love to see that. Um, that's always really neat when people share that with me. I appreciate it. And um, I hope you have a wonderful day.
I'll just I'll be here for like one more minute to make sure if anybody has any comments. <laughs> awesome, cars. Uh, oh. Oh, go ahead. Okay, read it out loud. Carl says, I'm pretty sure. <coughs> Sorry, what? Carl says, I'm pretty much always happy to try any drawing technique or subjects. Awesome. I love it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, um, it, thanks for joining me, Carl. I love it. That's, that's neat. Um, and thanks for sharing your drawing with me. That was, that was awesome. And this, I, I will put the link up. Um, it'll take me a couple minutes to find it. Um, but I'll get that up really soon underneath. Awesome, Pat. I am so glad. <laughs> oh, did you want to read that one, Kaden? Oh, okay. Awesome. I'm so glad, Pat. <laughs> Okay, you are you are super welcome, Cars, and um, thanks to all of you for joining, and Liz and Sam for the comments too, and for joining, and anybody else who um, joined but did not comment or chat, and um, for people who watch this later on, uh, your comments are always appreciated, and I do read them and respond to them, so. Uh, Awesome. I'm just getting at some of these last, uh, some vertical lines here just for, uh, just for fun. <laughs> While I'm waiting to see if anybody else uh, comments, I think I got all of them. So um, have a wonderful week. Drop down some shadows right here. Okay, and I'll see you next time.